Hi, this is T with T Quilts, and today I'm here with all of my rotary cutting supplies, or shall I say most of my rotary cutting supplies, but mostly I'm going to be talking about the various different rotary cutters, and I want to change the blades on some. So, what I want to first start with is storage of your rotary cutting blades. This is a container that you can use to store your rotary cutter in or you can store pins. I really like it because it's, it's got two openings where you can split the case in half. You can open either end and you can store pencils as I have in here or you can store rotary blades as well. This is one that was made for me by a friend. You can also put in your rotary cutters or you can also add pins in here as well so I can add marking tools as well and then another storage containers or these these containers that are made by Clover and you can get them for your 45 millimeter cutters or you can get them for your 60 millimeter cutters but what I also like is that it gives you a pocket that you can put in a storage container to store your rotary blades and I really like these for when I'm traveling to retreats or sewing away from home then I've got an extra blade if I uh, need to replace it while I'm out and then one other type of storage are the uh, pop top containers and you just pop the lid and I like to use these I got my Chanel blade in this one I also can put in any exacto blades as well and then in this other one I tend to keep my smaller blades in here and I can put more than one in here so I really like that for storage And then also what you see are the containers. In this container, I store mostly my micro blades. I have a Chanel cutter, an Ofa, circle cutter, and then some more X-Acto blades are just hanging around in here. So I'll be making sure I clean this area up. And then in this container is where I use my supplies for my 45 millimeter and 60 millimeter blades so I have my rotary cutter stored in here and then I also have containers where I put the old blades and I have two cutting areas I actually put these in my cutting areas and as I'm replacing blades I put the blades in there and then I have all of my new blades or here as well as some that I've marked paper every now and then I'll keep like two blades so if I need to cut some paper I have those available so I just write on them paper and then I've got a lot of new blades as well additional rotary cutters we'll be talking about those in a minute also stored in here is a rotary cutter 45 millimeter sharpener to sharpen the blade but I don't really use that a whole lot I used to at first but now that I can get 45 millimeter blades pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. I don't worry about that. This is an arm guide for making circles that you can attach to your standard rotary cutter through the hole here. So then you can have a little guide arm that holds out. I haven't used that. Still in a pack. And then I also have some non slip adhesive rings from True Grips and then from the Steady Betty. I have some strips that you can put to keep your ruler from slipping as well as I have a klutz glove and I will tell you I've used this a couple of times and I have cut myself twice and that's why I purchased this glove I just don't use it like I should but I'm going to try to see if I can start back using it at some point and then the last thing in here are some suction cups that you can use on your ruler if you want to hold on to these instead I use these a lot when I'm working with miniature pieces and I'm using very small rulers I find these are helpful to keep my fingers away from the blade because I can just curve around so I'm going to actually start working on my large rotary cutters so I'm going to 
move some of these things over. I think I have one in here as well. And I have this rotary cutter. Okay, some supplies that I'm using while I'm cleaning my rotary, while I'm checking and replacing my blades, or I'm using shelf liner just in case the screw is so tight that I can't get any traction. I just use these to help me release the screws. Right here, I have some oil. If I need to put a, dro a drop of oil, and I have a paper towel that already has oil on it so I can wipe the blades. Before we talk about cleaning your rotary blades, I do want to talk about if you travel with your rotary, rotary cutters, that you may want to mark them some kind of way so that you know that this rotary cutter is yours. I sometimes will put a piece of trim on it to tell me that it's mine. Other times I will put my name inside of the blade on the side that I'm not using so it's visible right away. Some other things that I have done with my rotary cutters is sometimes I will mark when I put in the last new blade. So this one is saying I had a new blade January 2015. So if I'm doing that again I need to change my date. I think a little alcohol will get that off. So, the first thing I want to do is get some scrap fabrics to cut. So I have a piece of scrap fabric that I want to cut. And while I'm here as well, I just want to talk about the difference in this 60 millimeter blade and this one. They're both by Ofa. And this one is your ergonomic handle and this one is your straight handle and I like them both and this is a blade that can be used either for your right or left hand you have to do no switching around of the blade to do so on the ergonomic handle you do have to put the blade on the other side if you're right handed so if you're cutting with your right hand you'd have to put the blade on this side of the cutter whereas I'm left handed so I'm holding it in this hand and it's here. I also like that it has a safety lock feature so it's open. I can lock the blade open which I never do but you can also lock it so that the blade is closed for storing so you don't have to worry about the blade coming out. And while I'm here I'll just go ahead and talk about the 45 millimeter blade by Martelli and this one is for left-handed use. You have to buy these rotary cutters by left or right-handed. So I don't have a right-handed one in my storage. But when it's closed, you have this safety that's around the blade. And what you do, is I'm, I'm just going to turn it around, is you release the safety on the blade. And so I think with this one closed, as you start rolling, it will open up. It's just been a little while since I've used this one, but let's test it. And then it opens up, and you can go ahead and start to cut. Okay. And then to close it back, you do have to manually close it back, though. But that's just a different blade. Okay. So now we're back to testing our rotary blades to see if we they need to be replaced. And the one thing about a rotary blade you should not be pressing hard on any surfaces especially I'm just doing this test with one layer of fabric but if I get anything that's pulling then I know I need to replace my blades so I'm just gonna put light pressure go through this scrap okay. so it looked like it might be okay or might not be let me put a little bit more pressure and see if it comes apart so it comes apart so I'm just gonna test it again and it comes apart I just may not have had enough pressure the first time but I do know that this blade is very dirty so what I'm going to do it's a good blade I don't need to replace it and I know that because I just replaced this blade about two weeks ago and I haven't done that much cutting with it 
So I'm just going to go ahead and clean this blade. So what I'm going to do is turn my rotary cutter to the wrong side. I'm going to remove this screw and it's tight so that's why I have my shelf liner here to assist me. And when I take everything off, I want to make sure that I take everything off and lay it in the same order that I want to put it back together. Okay, and then I just take my paper towel that I have some oil on and just wipe everything to get away all the debris. So that's one. Be very careful lifting up your blades. Wipe everything down. Put it back in the same order I want to put it together. And the reason why this one is so dirty is because I was actually cutting felt. put that back this little piece here I want to wipe all my parts to get rid of any debris and sometimes the blades just like having a little oil they'll rotate a little better so now I want to put this all back together be real careful with the blade got my blade got my cutter Pull that up. Okay. So I got that. And then this has a little shaping to it that's kind of ovalish. So I want to make sure that I get that in the right position so that it goes all the way down. And then lastly, my screw. And I tie that down. And if I need it a little tighter, I'll just do that. But if I can pull it back, then I'm okay. Alright, so this one's done. Here's the ergonomic one. Just want to see if I need to replace it. I haven't used this one in a while, but it's cutting pretty good. Okay, so I don't need to replace this blade. And it doesn't look like it's dirty, but I'll go ahead and lock it and check it anyway. I don't think I've used this one since I've replaced the blade. Oops. My lock came off. That's why I have the shelf liner here because this one was very difficult to open up. So and I don't have much debris in there, but I do see a little something on the blade. I don't know if that's from rubbing or if it's dirt, but I'll just go ahead and wipe it since I've got it open. Take it off. Wipe everything. And then wipe this side. Put this back on the spindle. Put it back here. Make sure this little shaping lines up on the blade. And then my screw. Okay, so that's two. Now I'll lock that one. Okay. So I'm trying to find a blade now that needs to be changed. So let's see if this one needs to be changed. This one's barely cutting. I don't even know why this one's still in here. I think I was at a class and it wouldn't cut and I had a different container that was a lot of pressure to cut 
that was a lot of pressure and it still didn't cut everything so this one I want to actually change the blade on so I'm going to close it back unscrew my blade and of course it says it was last replaced January 15 so that's an indicator in itself that it needs to be replaced if I've been using it a lot so this one is a good example of the debris from doing a lot of rotary cutting and not cleaning behind your blades this will stop your blades also from working but since this blade has been in here since 2015 I'm going to replace this blade so I just want to wipe everything off make sure everything is nice and clean okay so now I want to wipe here I don't want that blade so I want to wipe all of this dirt off Okay, so I've got my used blade container. I'm going to carefully pick this up, put it into this container for safe disposal, and then get a new blade. Now, sometimes you'll purchase blades and they'll have more than one in a package, and right here. Um, you don't know unless you slide these apart they have oil on them so you can slide them apart to see if you've got more than one blade I've had somebody's rotary cutter not working because they had two blades installed and didn't know it so make sure you check to see if it will slip so I'm still checking just in case this might have been a five pack or something so now I've just got the one blade here and it does come with oil I just want you to see I hope you can see the oil that's inside of here I'll just put that to the side I may need to replace another blade anyway now this is excessive oil so what I'm going to do is use my little cloth my paper towel and take off the excess oil put my new blade on make sure I close that up so I don't get cut so I've got everything protected and then I just close it back up now I'm going to just go ahead and do this to all of my rotary cutters and I will see you in my next video thank you for watching Bye-bye.